ओके आपको क्या क्या पता स्केल्टर मसल्स के बारे में कंट्रोल कर सकते हैं ये अपने बॉडी को सपोर्ट देते पूरे अटैच करते क्या प्रेजेंट होता रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर द मोमेंट स्केल्टर मसल के अलावा आपको कौन से कौन से मसल पता है लड़की भी कुछ बोलते जनरली प्रेजेंट इन लिम्स लिम्स डिफरेंस बिटवीन अदर मसल स्केल्टर मसल और लाइट एंड डार्क बैंड्स आर प्रेजेंट्स स्ट्राइशंस प्रेजेंट वो हो चुका है ऑलरेडी ओके सो यू थिंक आई थिंक यू हैव लॉट लॉट ऑफ नॉलेज अबाउट द मसल्स सो फर्स्ट वी विल सी मसल्स मसल्स आर द कनेक्टिव टिश्यूज दे डेवलप फ्रॉम द मिजोडर्म and they contain uh, contractile proteins uh, more commonly they are like actin and myosin and they bring the change in the shape of the cell or uh, change ho jata hai cell ke shape mein that will ultimately bring uh, decrease in the entire length of the muscles and that generate a force and that force will causes movement maybe it's movement of the bowel or movement of the uh, blood or movement of the bones or movement of whole skeletal system or movement of the body but they, that force will bring some <coughs> movement in a some structure and uh, their help in the uh, motion of some uh, something like a cardiac muscle pumped they increase the pressure and that pushes the blood out of the heart and that helps to move the blood or helps for circulation of the blood <coughs> okay, sorry similarly skeletal muscle when contract the <coughs> generate the force and causes the movement of the skeletal system uh, or joints we can more specifically <coughs> we can call it as a um, joint uh, similarly when smooth muscle contracts the contract they can increase the pressure in the urinary bladder it causes a mo- causes a movement of the urine to come out of the bladder or contraction of the stomach or intestine and increase the forward movement of the uh, chimes so they specifically perform any particular work done so to understand this uh, uh, different muscles are there so to for easy study and to uh, understand them better we divided these muscles into three different system one is skeletal system second is cardiac muscles 
and the third is the smooth muscles. As name suggests, skeletal muscles are, are uh, has a close association with the skeletal system, and together they are also called as a musculoskeletal system. So muscles also and bones also many times they study together because they always work in together. Bone without muscles are not useful that much, and muscles uh, skeletal muscles without bones are not useful that much. So their mechanism of functioning and uh, actions, uh, all those things will be has a little bit difference as compared to cardiac muscles and smooth muscles. So the skeletal muscles studied differently. Cardiac muscles present in the heart, they doesn't attach with the, any bone. They attach with the uh, fibrocartilaginous rings. And when they contract, they increase the pressure inside the heart and that pushes the blood outside the heart and cause causes a movement of the blood or circulation of the blood or flow, they maintain the flow of the blood entire the body. Third muscles comes is a smooth muscles. They are usually present in the uh, almost all type of the visceral organs like a uh, respiratory uh, tract or GI tract, urinary bladder, uh, then uh, reproductive tracts. Then you come to the blood vessels. So cardiac muscles, heart muscles, so blood vessels may be muscles with and these are smooth muscles. Then like a uh, mus um, uh, mus iris muscles or uh, lenticular muscles. Then all these are the muscles, uh, they are smooth muscles. And they had entire different mechanism of the contractions and their properties are also very different. So uh, when we uh, will study cardiophysiology, that time we uh, talk in detail, study detail about the cardiac muscles. When we are going to study GI tract, that, then that time we'll uh, talk detail about the smooth muscles. Here I will briefly introduce you cardiac muscle and smooth muscle. But here we'll talk more detail about the skeletal muscles. Okay. Now, before going for those uh, detail of the skeletal muscle, we must understand the difference between the different uh, muscles, cardiac muscle and skeletal muscles. So first, what is the muscle or muscle cell? It is a, one of the example of excitable tissue. And as in previous class, we already discussed what is meant by excitable tissue. The anything which can respond to the stimulus uh, are called excitable tissue. And uh, muscle is also one of the that. When you got stretching or any electrical stimulus, it generates action potential in the cell membrane of the uh, muscles. And that action potential can generate contractions in the particular uh, cell. Now, how the contraction generated? For that, we need a contractile protein, and those are actin myosin is one of the uh, common contractile protein. They are present along with the other uh, supportive proteins. They form the whole contractile mechanism, and once the action potential generated, it brings about the uh, contraction in the actin and myosin filaments, and that will change the shape of the muscle cell entirely. In other words, they reduce the length of the muscle entirely. And when many muscle fibers reduce their length, it will cause a huge reduction in the length of the whole muscle and that will generate a force and that will produce a motion. Okay, this is how uh, these uh, muscles work. So now these muscles are responsible for the maintenance of our posture or movement of the various body parts. Uh, even uh, mo movements of our whole body from one part of the world to the other part. So uh, in this also they are involved. Then uh, also movement of the internal organs like cardiac muscle movements or GI tract movement or respiratory mus uh, muscles movement or even respiratory tract movement. So all those are involved. And as I already said, they are uh, developed from the mesodermal layer uh, embryonically and that's why they are all, uh, uh, usually inside the ectoderm. Uh, and there are three types, cardiac muscles, uh, smooth muscle and skeletal muscles. Uh, be, apart from this, uh, they also classify depend upon uh, how they regulated or, or how their contraction has been controlled. Uh, so, and depend upon that, they are uh, divided into voluntary and involuntary. And also depend upon their microscopic structure, they are divided into stratted and smooth muscles. So first we see the stratted and uh, non-stratted muscle or stratted and smooth muscle. Stratted muscles. Uh, these uh, it, uh, uh, the stations are because of the regular arrangement of uh, actin and myosin filaments. It is like similar like you are seeing the uh, our Independence Day Parade or Republic Day Parade. 
there you will see the whole entire parade will have some different uh, uh, same type of the uh, uh, uniform but there are different color in that uniform and since the entire parade is moment in the moves in the same moment that will same pattern will see and it will make a some uh, beautiful uh, view similarly these all uh, actin myosin filaments are arranged themselves in the same positions and because of that that cre uh, create a clear cut demarcation in the line and that will create a dark and light band and that shows the striated appearance of the skeletal muscle and those muscles are called striated muscles uh, in our body skeletal muscles and cardiac muscles show this uh, regular striations and that's why they are called striated muscles now in non striated muscle it doesn't mean that they doesn't contain actin or myosin filament they does contain actin and myosin filament but they are not regularly arranged and that's why they doesn't show the clear cut dark and uh, light bands and that's why their appearance is more of those uh, uniform appearance and that's why they are also called as a smooth muscles and these non striated muscles are usually seen, uh, seen the, in the smooth muscles okay now another diff, uh, two types are voluntary and involuntary voluntary muscles are the muscles which you can contact on your own so with your will power with your conscious awareness you can contact these muscles and those muscles are called voluntary muscles and almost all skeletal muscles are voluntary muscles and they usually supplied by the somatic nerves cranial nerves and spinal nerves both uh, but somatic nerve which uh, is part of the peripheral tract and voluntarily uh, with our conscious will they regulate it or they control and can cause a change in their uh, force of contraction length of contraction on our will now what i am speaking so these are voluntarily i am speaking it is speaking on my own will so all these muscles contracting like a vocal cord contractions or contraction of my lip tongue my hand movement are contracting all these are voluntary muscles because it, they are under my will now second stage set of the muscles which uh, we cannot control on our will and those are called involuntary control so they are usually not supplied by somatic nerves and they are usually supplied by the autonomic nerves and more specifically they had their inbuilt automatic activity so they don't they are not dependent on any stimulus bahar se koi stimulus aaya and then will contract the cardiac muscle has its own autonomy and it can uh, beat on its own even if you remove all connections uh, from the brain then also they can uh, beat but it does get influenced by this autonomic nervous system they can increase their contraction they can increase the rate of contraction they can increase the force of contraction or they can decrease <coughs> their rate of contraction or decrease their force of uh, contraction but it is it will not be on your will so you, you you consciously cannot increase or decrease the force of contraction berkit uh, you cannot increase or decrease your force of contraction of the heart muscle on your voluntary will so it is not under our conscious control similarly smooth muscle is also not our, uh, under our conscious control they contact on their own uh, space and as per the body requirement and they relax on their own space and as per body uh, requirement but they does get influenced by the autonomic nervous system and autonomic nervous system is also not on, in our voluntary control that's why we call them as involuntary uh, muscle okay uh, now we'll talk entirely about the skeletal muscles and if we get time and of this class we might discuss little bit about the cardiac muscle and uh, smooth muscles now uh, come to the skeletal muscles these are the muscles which present in close association with the skeletal system and participate in a voluntary movement or locomotion of the body and why you want to, to do these voluntary motions or locomotion kyu karna hai sir for fast movement we think involuntary motions are right sorry sir we think for fast movements that is quick movement involuntary actions are right or for processes which doesn't require a thinking involuntary processes are right. no 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 fast movements occur in skeletal muscles skeletal muscle is the fastest muscle among all cardiac muscles smooth muscles and skeletal muscles 
और स्मूथ मसल इज द स्लोवेस्ट मसल उस पर आएंगे हम पर हमें जो स्केलेटल मसल हमें मोमेंट करने की क्यों जरूरत है बॉडी को वाई वी नीड ऑल दिस मोमेंट एंड ऑल दोस्ट थिंग्स फूड ओके सो इट इज ऑल्सो वन ऑफ द पार्ट ऑफ अवर होमिस्टेटिक मेकेजम इट ब्रिंग्स अवर बॉडी all these moments muscular moments all those things and try to maintain the homeostasis or internal environment of our body now we see the structural organization of these muscles how these muscles has been there so each muscle fibers which is a one of the long cell multinucleated cells uh, maybe it, uh, ranges from the few micron to few millimeters in the length they arrange themselves or they wrap with a uh, thin fibrous elastic tissue and that is called endomysium so this is one muscle fiber and it is wrapped by this endomysium this endomysium can attach with each other and forms a group of the muscle fibers and that group of the muscle fiber is called fasciculi these fasciculi are uh, built together with a more strong fibrous tissue uh, that has a less elastic and more toughness and that is called perimysium so this is a perimysium and these perimysiums comes and attach to each other and uh, attach many fasciculus together and will form entire muscle belly okay and uh, this uh, perimysium will form this all fasciculus together along with the some other connective tissues will be there and hold this uh, perimysium connective tissue and fasciculi will wrap by the more tougher and uh, toughest uh, structure of the muscle or uh, fibrous tissue and uh, that is called epimysium so it is covered with the epimysium and this will form whole muscle belly now these uh, muscle fibers has a contractile uh, in nature while this endomysium perimysium epimysium it doesn't have contractile nature they has elastic in nature and toughness so this muscle in the center of the muscle belly there is a muscle a huge number of the muscle fibers but as it goes to the periphery the muscle fiber continues to start decreasing and only this uh, endomysium perimysium connective tissues and epimysium will be remain and they will condense together and form much tougher and very thick uh, 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 non elastic uh, non tensile structure and that is called tendon so they will form the tendon in the end so the muscle belly usually has a end as a tendon and this tendon are made up of the whole collagen fibers and they attach themselves to the bone and this make is called insertion in the bone bye बाय बाय कर सबको बाय बाय सब बाय बाय बोल रहे चलो तुमको बाय पापा वो हमारे तो है बाय किसने बोला सबने बोला आपको बाय आओ जो पता जो सो दिस इज हाउ दिस मसल हैज बीन कंप्लीटली फॉर्म एंड आउट ऑफ दिस मसल द ओनली मसल फाइबर्स व्हिच आर द कॉन्ट्रैक्टाइल एंड व्हिच विल मेक द चेंज इन द एंटायर मसल लेंथ and this tendon and other fibrous tissue are non contractile and there is usually support to the prevents the overstretching of the muscle fibers they prevent the rupture of the muscle fiber or any injury or if some pressure has been applied so uh, prevent the injury to the muscle fibers from the pressure or any other type of the stress once you uh, go in uh, try to see the microscopic structure this muscle belly is when in detail this form the small small long muscle fibers and if you see the detail structure of these muscle fibers then the muscle fibers is entirely filled with the myofibril these are nothing but the sequential arrangement of the contractile protein so if you see the structure of one individual muscle it range from the 1 mm to 4 4 mm long depend upon the length of the muscle small muscle mein badi chote chote muscle fibers hote long muscles mein 
लंबी लंबी मसल फाइबर होती है एंड विच एज डायमीटर्स दैट इज सिलेंड्रिकल स्ट्रक्चर एंड विच एज डायमीटर्स समवेयर अराउंड टेन टू हंड्रेड माइक्रॉन एंड दे आर मल्टी न्यूक्लियटेड सो द सेल मेम्रेन ऑफ द मसल फाइबर इजिली वी कॉल इट एज अ सार्कोलेमा स्ट्रक्चर इज सिमिलर लाइक दैट ऑफ द सेल मेम्रेन and the fluid which present inside the muscle is also called as a sarcoplasm which is synonym with the cytoplasm and this sarcoplasm contain almost all type of the organelles which can be present in any type of the cell like nuclei golgi apparatus mitochondria endoplasmic reticulum and uh, ribosomes which is important for protein synthesis and also uh, so, uh, energy source like lipids and uh, glycogen out of this the sarco endoplasmic reticulum in uh, skeletal muscle we doesn't call it as endoplasmic reticulum it get modified and it has a little bit more functions than uh, simple endoplasmic reticulum and that's why it is called sarcoplasmic reticulum and the sarcoplasmic reticulum is a very important part along with the um, cell membrane it forms a sarcotubular system and uh, which is important for the एक्साइटेशन कॉन्ट्रेक्शन कपलिंग नेक्स्ट स्लाइड में हम बात करेंगे वॉट इज एक्साइटेशन कॉन्ट्रेक्शन कपलिंग अपार्ट फ्रॉम दिस इंटर साइटोप्लाजम सार्कोप्लाजम यूजली फील्ड विद द कॉन्ट्रेक्टर प्रोटीन दिज अर माई फाइब्रिल्स एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दिज कम्प्लीटली फीलिंग ऑफ द माई फाइब्रिल्स दिस पुशेज द न्यूक्लियस टू द पेरीफेरी सो देर आर मल्टीपल न्यूक्लियस एंड देर यूजली एट द पेरीफेरी ऑफ द Uh, cell that doesn't present in the center of the cell, like in the smooth muscle, uh, uh, they are usually in the <coughs> center of the cell. In skeletal muscle, they are usually at the periphery, and entirely its to, uh, entire length is usually filled with the uh, myofibrils, and we, these are uh, mainly made up of the contractile protein and other supportive proteins, and which participate into the uh, contraction of the muscles. Now come to the structure of the myofibrils. This uh, myofibril is usually arranged parallel to each other in the entire muscle length, and their length is ranging from similarly like that of the muscles, one to four mm, and which diameter is somewhere around one to two micron. Now, if you see in detail of the structure, the, what are the striations you are seeing in the skeletal muscle? These are the nothing the striations which are present on the myofibril. So, myofibril has a two type of the uh, distinct color one is a dark band that is called a band and another is a light band that is called i band and this alternate arrangement of dark and light band will gives the striated arrangement to the myofibrils <coughs> now if you uh, see the uh, striations in detail structure the dark band is called a band because it has a an isometric uh, response to the polarized light that's why it shows A dark band and which ranges somewhere around 1.5 micron in the length. This a uh, and uh, these are usually that a band usually contain the entire length is usually filled with the thick filament that is myosin and only small portion of the thin filament. Uh, so here is a central portion will be there where thick filament of the myosin will be uh, there entire length that is called a band. And with this uh, thick uh, filament, the thin filament is also enter into this uh, a band, but they will not completely encroach to the a band, and they will have little bit away in the center of the a band. They will not close to the a band, and the center of the a band will forms little light zone between the a band. A band के बीच में तो पूरा a band dark है, but center जो myosin filament जहाँ पे नहीं आ रहे, thin filament जहाँ पे नहीं आ रहे. that shows little bit lighter than the a band and that forms edge zone so the center will be the edge zone where the thin filament doesn't overlap to each other now center of the edge zone is also called as a midline that's a name refer to the uh, m line okay now come to the i band i band is the remaining portion of the myofibril which doesn't contain uh, thick filament so myosin filament will not be there uh, that gives a light color appearance and, and, and that's why they shows a, a called a band it is length is ranging somewhere around 
one micron length and this only contain only and only active filament there is no uh, uh, myosin filaments okay so uh, a band contain only uh, myosin filament while a band contain both actin and myosin filament now this i band usually uh, uh, bisected or separated by the one line which is anchoring protein line uh, that line is usually in zigzag shape that's why they named it as a z line and this z line will give us little darker appearance to the center portion so there will be the lighter line in the a band that say edge zone while there is a darker line in the uh, light band and that is z line and uh, this uh, dip, uh, dip, uh, difference between two z line will consider as a one uh, muscle cell that is called as sarcomere so what a portion of the myofibril between two z line will call as a sarcomere and the entire length of the sarcomere is somewhere around 2.5 micron so half of the i band on the one side half of the i band on the other side and whole complete a band will together will form somewhere around 2.5 micron and when if you want to stretch it you can stretch it up to maximum up to 3.5 micron and once it calls that <coughs> Maximally, it can contract up to 1.5 micron, and uh, this is the where contraction and relaxation occur, and that will reflect entirely on the whole muscle cell. This is how this uh, structure will work, and they causes contraction and relaxation. Now, come to the thick filament and thin filament, so the actual contractile protein which present in our uh, muscle. So thick filaments are nothing but they are made up of the myosin uh, filament. The myosin filament are the uh, double helix structure twisted together and made up of the uh, uh, four different type of the protein, two heavy chains and uh, uh, four light chains. So these all together combine together and form thick filament. So if you see the structure of the thick filament, it will form the tail and head. So there is a tail structure, which is entirely made up of the heavy chains, while there is head structure, which is usually bend, bend it little bit, and which is made up of both uh, light chain and the uh, heavy chain. So if you see the these six polypeptides which come together, out of you see the thin uh, myosin filament is somewhere around 10 to 11 nanometer thick and length is somewhere around 45 nanometer and they arrange themselves together in such way the double helix are twisted together similar like, like that of the DNA and uh, CN will be formed at the tail side and well uh, NN that is uh, amino end will be on the head side and there the both light chain and heavy chain will be attached and uh, this type of structure which present in the skeletal muscle are also called as a myosin type 2 fibers uh, this is like a biochemical part where how we can separate if we uh, treat this uh, myosin with a trypsin uh, enzyme it can divide it into a large portion that is called heavy meromycin and light portion which is called light uh, meromycin the heavy meromycin will contain part of the head and also half of the tail part well if you expose this uh, uh, heavy meromycin with the another protein uh, enzyme that is called papain and it can split the heavy meromycin into head portion and tail portion that is called uh, heavy meromycin s1 and heavy meromycin s2 uh, it is just to understand the different structural uh, portion uh, of the uh, myosin physiologically uh, there is uh, no much need now only important part the myosin head has a strong um, affinity for the actin filament apart from this the myosin head also has affinity for the uh, atp molecules and it also has inbuilt atp activity and it can split the atp into adp and that can release the energy and from that energy is utilized for the uh, force of the muscle uh, muscle contraction okay so that you uh, try to understand and these are usually arranged 
uh, in a circular fashion and all heads will protrude out of outside towards the actin filament and actin filaments are surrounding entirely to this length surrounding so it is this is two dimensional but it will like this this is a uh, myosin filament multiple myosin filaments and their head will be protruded out like this everywhere and all actin filaments are surrounding uh, along this uh, myosin filament where head is uh, facing towards them now come to the thin filament or also called as the myosin filaments this is a thin filament is made up of three different type of the protein actin tropomyosin and troponin it's a length of around 4 to 5 nanometer in diameter and it is one of the part of the contractor protein and actin filament is actually has a filament which has a high affinity for the myosin head okay and there are a, uh, it is a globular protein made up of the two different protein chains uh, g actin and f actin and they twisted together similar like double helical structure and the, in the groove between the this uh, myosin filament it has a uh, sorry actin filament it has a myosin binding site then there is another protein which is a uh, more of the fibrous tissue uh, uh, and it uh, lies in the groove between the these two actin molecule chain and it usually covered the uh, myosin binding site which present on the actin filament and it prevent the con uh, attachment of the myosin head with the actin filament so these are like a regulatory protein so it regulates the binding of the actin and myosin filament then uh, this uh, tropomyosin is firmly attached with the actin filament with the another protein that is called troponin troponin has a three component troponin t troponin i and troponin c troponin t is attached with the tropomyosin troponin i is attached with the actin filament and troponin c has a binding capacity for the calcium and when our calcium enter into the cytoplasm they attach with the troponin c and will causes conformational changes on the uh, in the troponin and troponin will ch uh, change its shape and the changing of the shape will cause pull on the tropomyosin filament and tropomyosin filament will be moved out of the groove and now the actin binding uh, uh, myosin binding site present on the actin filament will get exposed this is how the entire uh, structure will work uh, now uh, <coughs> if you see this arrangement how these are arranged uh, uh, each other and to make this arrangement properly in that uh, whole system the, we need some other supporting protein also which are not contractile but they are important to make the contraction very effectively so this non contractile protein which present inside the myofibril these are alpha actinin tinnitin nebulin dystrophin and glycoprotein complex so alpha actinin it uh, cross links between actin filament and z line so z line which filament hai usko attach karne ka kaam karta hai this uh, alpha uh, actin and uh, that provide the resistance so when the actin filament moves towards the myosin filament they will also push the z line towards the uh, myosin filament that will bring about the uh, contraction another is uh, protein is tinnitin which uh, has a large elastic uh, connection and interconnect between the uh, z line and uh, other uh, contractor protein uh, which um, uh, present within the or uh, sorry other non contractor protein which present into the uh, muscle matrix and these are called series elastic components so it forms the series uh, elastic component that is important for the bringing a muscle uh, contraction and to generate the tension in the muscle or uh, muscle the another protein is a, a nebulin protein which cannot be stretched so this is not a non stretchable protein and that present at the one end of the alpha actin and also at the z line and that doesn't allow the stretch so it will form the whole apparatus uh, in a proper structure troponin tropomyosin complex and proper structure in the muscle and then another protein which is important for clinical point of view is dystrophy along with the glycoprotein it forms the complex and it provides the structural support of the whole this apparatus so the actin myosin filament ka jo apparatus hai usko structural support uh, provide karta hai and there are some, in some condition where genetic defect occur in this dystrophin can lead to the disease which is called 
uh, Duches uh, dystrophy, uh, muscular yeah. dystrophy, and uh, that you can see in one of the that renowned scientist. Oh, when I was at it, photo at I forget his name. Hawkins, black hole, just ne describe kya tha. So that he's also suffered from the same type of the uh, disease, and it slowly, slowly progresses, and it slowly, slowly start damaging the all muscles, and now muscles will start become non-contracted. Okay, now come to the another important structure of the muscle apart from the contractile protein is sarcotubular system. Okay, before going for the sarcotubular system, uh, we'll take a five minutes break. Okay, sir. Okay, now we we'll start with the sarcotubular system. Uh, it is one of the important uh, structure present in the skeletal muscles, uh, which is. Uh, important for the initiation of the contractions so it is the develop with the two different part of the cell one is a cell membrane that is sarcolemma another is a sarco uh, sarcoplasmic reticulum so cell uh, cell membrane will form t system or tubular system inside the cell while the uh, sarcoplasmic reticulum form longitudinal system so uh, the perpendicular system will form by the cell membrane while longitudinal system will form by the uh, sarcoplasmic reticulum. Now what happens uh, uh, when muscle sarcolemma is moving uh, across the length of the muscle fibers or my uh, muscle fibers during that time the, at the junction between the I band and A band <coughs> at the junction between this I band and A band the sarcoloma will invaginate into the sarcoplasm. So whole membrane will be uh, goes uh, inside the sarcoplasm and will form tubular like structure. And also at the periphery they form network structure with each other. So at the each junction there will be the entire length it will move throughout the cytoplasm. So the whole cell membrane will move inside the cytoplasm and, and that will form T system of the uh, sarcotubular uh, system ka, that will form T system and then uh, sarcoplasmic reticulum which is a part of endoplasmic reticulum will present uh, near and they will dilate it near the uh, T, uh, T tubules uh, near the T tubules and the dilated portion is called terminal system and they will arrange the dilated portion parallel to the T tubule and it will form the triad of two terminal system and one T tubule will form together and they are all this uh, terminal system connected through the uh, horizontal uh, tubes. This is called longitudinal system or longitudinal sarcoplasmic reticulum. They are connected to each other and this uh, uh, will together with two terminal system with one T tubule will form a triad and that triad together is called sarcotubular system. And this uh, transverse tubule usually, as I said, is formed because of the invagination of the cell membrane into the A band. And that invagination usually contains extracellular fluid is present here. And this T tubules has a calcium channels. And those channels are also called as a dihydropyridine uh, channels because they, are, they respond to dihydropyridine. And they uh, this dihydropyridine will activate the uh, longitudinal system of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Come to longitudinal system, uh, these are L tubules which uh, which doesn't contain extracellular fluid, so they contain intracellular fluid, but they are rich in the calcium concentration. So the sarcoplasmic reticulum is toward the high concentration of the calcium inside it, and it dilated. And that is called terminal system. This comes in close contact, and this terminal system. As a receptors called uh, calcium receptor, that those, those receptors are called rhinodin receptors. So T system has a dihydropyridine system. Okay, T system has a uh, dihydropyridine system, while uh, L system has a uh, rhinodin receptor. So there will be dihydropyridine receptors, another is rhinodin uh, receptors, and these rhinodin receptors are respond to the rhinodin. And we know that these both are alkaloid, dihydropyridine and rhinodine, they are alkaloid. Now, <coughs> so this is how they uh, club together. <laughs> and we know the, uh, <coughs> sorry, 
dry hydropyrimidine receptors will activate it. It will activate the ranodin receptors and that will open the calcium channels present on the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Now, how it works? Now, as, as, uh, as you know, the T system is nothing but the cell membrane uh, of uh, the sarcolemma or it is a sarcolemma. So, whenever the action potential generated in the muscle cell, that action potential is generated throughout the cell membrane. So, once one portion will generate it, it will spread in to the entire to the cell membrane. And so, along with the cell membrane, normally these are closed system. This is an inactive system where the cell membrane present outside is a positive, inside is a negative. Uh, this Everything will be uh, on these plates. So, now the calcium channels are closed. Everything is closed. Now, once the action pressure is generated, inside will become positive, outside will become negative, and that will activate the uh, dihydropyridine receptors and these dihydropyridine receptors will be coupled with the uh, rhinodine receptor and that will open the rhinodine receptors which present on the uh, terminal systems and terminal system contain very high concentration of the calcium and that calcium will be released into the muscles and this muscle calcium once it releases into the muscle it will act on the uh, uh, acting myosin filament and brings the contraction and this is how it, uh, this whole mechanism is called excitation contraction coupling. Excitation over here, that excitation will release the calcium, <coughs> that calcium will bring contraction. This is how <coughs> the electrical events will club with the mechanical event. So excitation is the electrical event, contraction is the mechanical event, and this both event is clubbed because of the sarcoplasmic reticulum, or we can call it a sarcotubular system with the help of the calcium and that will bring about the contraction of the muscle. So this is a very important part of the muscle contraction, excitation contraction coupling. If you are able to block the ranodin receptor or if you are able to block the dihydropyridine receptors, then there will be no contraction. Another important uh, fact you come to know about this, that a skeletal muscle has its own calcium source. So they do doesn't depend on an extracellular calcium concentration. So even if there is a very, very low concentration in the extracellular calcium, sarcoplasmic reticulum has enough calcium that can cause muscle contraction. So they had their internal source of the uh, calcium for the muscle contraction, like a smooth muscle, which has a very poorly developed sarcoplasmic reticulum. So smooth muscle has, is dependent on the extracellular calcium for their contraction, while skeletal muscle has independent. Uh, cardiac muscle also has its uh, not that developed, but uh, uh, developed uh, sarcoplasmic reticulum. So cardiac muscle also has a very low dependency on extracellular calcium level. So this is how the excitation contraction coupling occurs. Once this process of the excitation contraction occur, that will bring excitation contraction coupling occur. That will bring the muscle contraction. Now how the muscle get contract? The process of the muscle contraction is explained by the two scientists, E. F. Huxile and H. E. In 1954, and they named this theory as a sliding filament theory, or ratchet theory, or walk along theory. <coughs> uh, how the excitation contraction occurring, which uh, to occur any excitation contraction, there has to be a cross bridging between the actin and myosin filament. And <coughs> sorry. This cross bridging of actin myosin filament will bring about the contraction and relaxation. So there is to be cycle. Cross bridge ho hai, break ho hai, bridge ho hai, break ho hai. This is how the muscle will keep on getting contraction. So this is also called as an initiation of cross bridging cycle. Now what happens once at the rest, the troponin plates lightly bound with the actin and tropomyosin filament. There is no calcium inside. Tropomycin will cover the myosin binding site present on the actin, and so there is a no uh, uh, reaction between myosin head and actin filament. So this is how muscle is relaxed. Now once the excitation contraction coupling occur and calcium uh, releases into the cytoplasm, a sarcoplasm, this calcium will attach to the uh, troponin C, and that will make the conformation changes in the troponin C and that conformational changes in troponin C will pull this fiber, tropomyosin fibers away from the myosin binding site. And now myosin 
binding site will expose to the myosin head. The myosin head is always uh, charged with the help of ADP, ATP. Uh, it has a high affinity for the ATP. ATP is bind with the myosin head, and that uh, ATP's activity will be there, and that will release the energy, and uh, uh, it breaks the ATP into ADP and inorganic phosphate. And now myosin head along with ATP will have a very high affinity, and they attach to the energize, and they attach to the myosin binding site present on the actin filament. Once they uh, attach to myosin binding uh, site on the actin filament, it makes the conformational changes in the actin myosin ADP uh, uh, complex and that will cause a sudden flexion of the my, uh, myosin head. So a myosin head binder and it causes sudden flexion and that will cause internal or moment of the myosin head towards the midline. And that moment of the myosin head towards the midline from 90 degree it comes to, uh, to oh, so, sorry, from 45 degrees come to 90 degrees completely bends and that will bring the myosin filament come to more closer. So I have a myosin filament, myosin filament will move, move towards the center and this is how it will cause a decrease in the length of the muscle that will generate the mechanical force. That mechanical force is called power stroke. So flexion of the myosin head is called a uh, power stroke. Now once the power stroke occurs, uh, it will uh, uh, remain in that uh, position. Now second cycle will be there occur, which is called cross pitching. Now ADP within organic phosphate will not allow uh, the myosin head uh, to attach to the new ATP molecules. So uh, it will remain fixed to the uh, actin filament. But once it comes to close contact with the ATP molecules, ADP will be replaced and ATP molecule bind with the myosin heads. And as the ATP molecule binds with the myosin head, this myosin and ATP molecule has a low affinity for the actin filament and myosin head will be released from the actin filament. Now, if calcium is still present, if calcium is still present, the uh, myosin, uh, tropomyosin will still removed from the uh, act, uh, myosin binding uh, site of, on the actin filament. And ATP is already attached to the myosin head. That will split the ATP into again ADP and inorganic phosphate. And that increase their affinity for the uh, uh, myosin binding site present on the actin filament. And that will attach to the new myosin head. So, you have either this power stroke or now it comes relax. Now it attached to the another site, new site, which is an energized head will be there, which attached to the new site of the uh, actin filament, and that again cause a power stroke, and again it will bring towards the center, and this is how it will keep on bringing more and more myosin close to the midline. It is simply like it is walking on the myosin filament. That's why it is called walk along theory, or it is also called two filaments are sliding on each other. It's also called as a sliding filament theory or so it is like a ratchet they say um, when you are walking on the track uh, climbing on the mountain you hold that and you will always lock then another then you lock then you release then you lock so this is how you lock a ratchet uh, type phenomena it will keep on locking and try to bring that's why it is also called as a uh, ratchet theory so this activation reactivation continuously going on that will bring about a more and more contraction as long as the calcium present inside the uh, system okay and this is how muscle causes a contraction now how uh, the muscle get relaxed was it contract it has to be relaxed also so once uh, the action potential is gone this uh, first random receptor everything will get blocked and it activate a calcium pump which present in the on the sarcoplasmic reticulum and that will pump back the calcium present in the cytoplasm back to the sarcoplasmic reticulum and try to bring reduce the concentration of the calcium inside the cell again this is how once they remove the uh, calcium the calcium will remove from the troponin also and now troponin tropomycin complex will bring back to its own position and it cover the actin filament the myosin binding site will be completely covered and that will, will not allow the myosin and 
acting to cross bridge and that will start relaxing the muscle okay apart from this there is another important factor is uh, presence of the atp is very must to uh, cause muscle relaxation as you know adp along with the uh, myosin here has a high affinity for the uh, uh, actin filament they will remain cross bridge as as much as time if atp is not available moment atp available that atp will dissolve this cross bridge and the muscle will uh, relax so first there has to be atp to dissolve this cross bridge second thing calcium pump is on the dependent on the atp those calcium pump which remove the calcium from the muscles uh, for that also atp is required and um, because it is almost a 2000 time higher concentration of the calcium so large amount of the atp is required to pump the calcium from the cytoplasm into the sarcoplasmic reticulum so at the both places atp is required if atp is not available then once muscle contract it will be can remain in the phase of the contraction okay now Now, once you come to the role of the ATP, you also must think about the process called rigor mortis. Have you heard about rigor mortis? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sustained muscular bond. Yes, sir. Sustained muscular bond. Yes, sir. Stiffness of the body. Rigor mortis, what is it? Contraction. Stiffness of the body. Muscular contraction, sir. Now, what is rigor mortis? Sustained muscular contraction. No, sir. Fear. Inability of the muscle to relax after death. Rigor mortis occur after death. Mortis means? Yes, sir. Rigor means severe muscle contraction. So what happened after yes, death? After few hours, the ATP and everything production has been stopped after death and that reduces the uh, ATP supply to the muscles also. Now there is no ATP in the muscle also. And as the uh, ATP start reducing from the muscles, now the calcium will start leaking from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And that calcium will concentration inside the muscle will keep on increasing and that will uh, release the um, Topomycin, uh, remove the topomycin from the actin filament and expose the myosin binding site present on the actin filament and then myosin head will be attached to that actin filament. Normally myosin head is always uh, uh, charged so it will cause power stroke and will cause muscle contraction. Now but there is no more ATP is available. As ATP is keep on utilizing for this power stroke it will cause more and more contraction. Now, as uh, it progresses towards the more death, now ATP is not available, and that ATP unavailability of the ATP will not Abhi allow the three degree or expected forecast. This is uh, uh, because of lack of ATP. Now, ATP, uh, myosin head will not uh, detach from the actin filament and will remain attached, and that will cause a sustained contraction of the muscle. And this is usually started by the six hours of the death to the 12 hours of the death. Initiated with the, the small muscles first and then involve uh, large muscles. And they will completely cause the rigor mortis of the whole body uh, by, by the uh, time of 48 hours after, after death and after 48 of or death it will remain for another 12 hours in that stage and then slowly dissolve and dissolving occur it is not because of the removal of the calcium or something it start causing uh, lysis of the uh, uh, contractile proteins because of autolysis of the our own body so lysozymes are all, all released and then it start causing the uh, <clears throat> lysis of the all contractual protein and then muscles will start realizing this is a stage of putrefaction and by knowing the 
which muscles has been contracted and rigor mortis developed kitna developed hua hai and all those things you can find the timing of the death also so it is very important clinic has a important clinical significance specifically in the forensic medicine about the <coughs> rigor mortis then once the muscle contract what are the all changes occurs so importantly edge zone is the zone where the actin myosin filament doesn't overlap that will completely disappear second thing a band is like a uh, has an entire length of the myosin filament and there is no change in the length of the myosin filament so a band will be remain constant r band is the band which contain only myosin uh, sorry actin filaments and as the actin filament is overlapping now the band which contain only actin uh, uh, filament will start decreasing that's why the length of the i band will also start uh, decreasing as the length of the i band start de decreasing z line will also start coming close together so the uh, distance between the z line will also reduce that will uh, shorten the <coughs> sarcomere so these are all uh, changes occur to our striations in cardiac muscle so these are events you can go through this how it initiated stimulation of the motor neuron initiation of the uh, action potential in the motor neuron uh, uh, then it goes to the uh, motor nerve endings then it reaches to the synaptic nerve and that uh, releases the calcium into the synaptic nerves that will causes a exocytosis and release of the acetylcholine that acetylcholine bind on the motor end plate and that will open the voltage gated so, uh, sorry uh, acetylcholine gated uh, sodium channels sodium channels enter into the cell and that will generate end plate potential if enough quantity of the end plate potential is generated that can gives initiation of action potential and once action potential generated it will release the calcium into the terminal system and once it releases uh, from the calcium uh, into terminal system the calcium will diffuse into the sarcoplasm and it bind to the troponin c that will uncover the uh, myosin binding site present on the actin filament and it will cause cross bridging between actin and myosin filament then followed by the power stroke and that will cause initiation of the sliding filament over the thick filament and that will lead to contract muscle contraction how it relax opposite will be the active transport of the calcium will be remove the uh, calcium from the sarcoplasm decrease the concentration of sarcoplasm calcium will be removed from the troponin c that will causes a uh, dissolution of the cross bridging and muscle will relax now come to the characteristics of the uh, muscle contraction but apna time khatam hote aa raha hai ऑलमोस्ट थर्टी थ्री स्लाइड हो चुकी है और अभी और बीस बाईस स्लाइड है कैन वी टेक दिस इन इवनिंग और आई मेक रिकॉर्डिंग आई विल मेक अ रिकॉर्डिंग एंड आई पुट इट ऑन स्टॉप टॉकिंग ओके बाय हैव अ नाइस डे जाना नहीं जाना नहीं वन मिनट